Hey everyone, I have an exciting show for you today. I have someone that I have personally stalked on Instagram. Uh, this individual puts out a lot of great content, very motivational, gets me thinking, gets me pumped up, and I just had to reach out and he said yes. So uh, let's welcome Mr. George Pitts to the show. How you doing, George? Hey, I'm good, I'm good. How you doing today, my brother? I'm doing very, very well. Uh, for those of the folks that don't follow you on IG yet, the handle is Mr. George Pitts. Uh, why don't you introduce who you are, what you do, and uh, we'll get to going from there. Sure, sure. So my name is uh, George Pitts. I am a business coach, I'm a personal finance strategist. I'm also a real estate investor, which I absolutely love. Uh, a father, a husband, a man of God, um, and I just love all things uh, wealth, um, wealth building. Um, that's something that's a big passion of mine, and that's probably been put on st steroids by a thousand when I had my son two years ago. And uh, it's just uh, it's it's just been an awesome ride ever since. So that's what I do, and I and I do what I love every day, and it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, r real quick, where are you in the country? Oklahoma. Oklahoma, uh, yes. that, that is awesome. So right kind of right kind of Midwest uh, hometown. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And it's funny how children kind of can uh, reset you, right, and kind of create focus and energy. Oh. Man, I mean, you know, I thought I was motivated and bright-eyed, bushy-tailed before. When they put that little man in my arms for the first time, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just like going from zero to a hundred. Or if you hear these exotic cars and they say it goes to zero to sixty in three seconds or whatever, that's what it felt like. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think once you know I had him and was focused on him. Um, my motivation level went through the roof mm -hmm. and I just unlocked all these levels within me that I didn't think were there. Mm -hmm. um, two hours after my son was born, once we got in the room and everything calmed down, I opened him up a custodial account and, and invested into multiple stocks while he was napping and my wife was resting from having, uh, from, from having an emergency C-section. And I had started investing into <laughs> him and building his future and he wasn't even, you know, 12 hours old. Uh, I bought, yeah, I bought him his first set of stocks, which was Disney, AT&T, which is a dividend stock I actually love, Coca-Cola, and, um, and now I'm drawing a blank, uh, but it, it's basically a gaming company because I love gaming and I know gaming is, you yeah. know, it's big. And uh, it was a gaming company. I'll think of it here in a minute. But yeah, those are the first four stocks I bought him and he was maybe two hours old. I think <laughs> Around two o'clock in the afternoon, we I think he, he was born at ten forty three. So, uh, yeah, he was roughly about three hours old, and he he was already a stock investor. So, oh, that um, that is an yeah. amazing story, and I love how you have the details. He was born at ten forty three. You know, three oh. hours later, he's got Disney, Coke, uh, so on and so forth. That is. That's oh cool. yeah, yeah, I remember every bit of that day, every single bit, not one moment I, I don't remember. Oh, that's awesome that you could hold on to that. That is that yeah. is beautiful. One of your yeah. IG's posts that went out the other day that just kind of shook me, uh, and I actually wanted, I pulled it up, uh, was when I started paying attention to my money, money started paying attention to me. Yeah. Uh, you remember that one and kind of what you were oh, thinking yeah. when you put that out there? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, whenever I put some of these things out there, they just kind of come to me. And, you know, Twitter, even though I don't, I promote Twitter a lot or, or Twitter is more of like my my idea bank it's like okay when I get these ideas or something just comes in my head I go on there tweet it real quick so yeah. I've got something to come back to and post on oh Instagram that makes sense later. so it's, it's kind of like my journal it's like it's like my live <laughs> journal but um you know when I posted it what I was thinking was I, at that moment I was actually going through my quick books and looking at everything and it just popped in my head, you know, when I started paying attention to my money, my money started paying attention to me because for years, you know, me and my wife, we've always made good money, well over six figures, you know, combined done really, really well, but we always live paycheck to paycheck. And we always just, you know, I don't want to say barely getting by because that, that wouldn't be a good term, but it was just like, we had just enough, even though we really had more than enough. So once I started paying attention to our money, paying attention to our, you know, our finances, what we were doing, the actions that we were taking, that's when everything shifted for me. Mm -hmm. And instead of us constantly trying to get extra hours of overtime, trying to make extra money so we can go on vacation and do different things, it was like that stuff just started to come natural. 
and it was almost like money was starting to pay attention to me uh, because I was starting to pay attention to it. But for years, it was like I was trying to get its attention by working overtime and, you know, working a second job and my wife working extra hours. And we were trying to get its attention. But in theory, we weren't paying attention to what we had. So therefore, it wasn't paying attention to us. So that's kind of the thought process. Behind it. Well, that, that is uh, every once in a while, probably once a month, I find one of those things out there and I'm like, oh, that's going to that's, that's gonna hold water for a long time. And I think that's going to be one of those things. You can put that out once a month and it will just, it'll, it'll shook people for, for a long time. The other one was, I think it, I think it was, um, don't bring a W2 mindset to a 1099 party. Oh remember yeah. That? Yeah. Remember that one? Oh yeah. I remember that one. And, and I'll tell you exactly why I said that one. I mean, it, it's very simple. I get, hundreds of DMs a week, right? I'm sure. Can you help me? And some of them are just, hi, hello, yeah. can you help me? I'm ready. You know, like nothing else, just like one sentence things like, what am I supposed to do with this? And, you know, most people, the question that they ask next is like a W-2 question, the way I see it. Yeah. How much can I make in 30 days? And to me, that's like what you ask in an interview, you know, how much am I going to make an hour? How much do I, if it's salary, how much do I make every two oh. weeks? Or if it's once a month, how much do I make every month? And as you know, and I know, when it comes to, you know, business, the 1099 section, there's no, there's no roadmap to what you're going to make. It's all about the work you put in, right? Yeah, yeah. And even if you go and buy multiple rentals, you don't know if, you know, you're, you don't know how much money you're going to make until you get someone in there and you agree on, on, on a term. So, you know, it's, people ask the wrong questions, you know, and, and that's why I said, you know, don't bring a W2 mindset to a 1099 party because the way I see it, all of us that have 1099s and we're doing things, we have a certain party that we're attending every day. Every that day. we enjoy. And you can't bring someone into that party and everybody's partying on this level where it's like, okay, we're calculating, we're making, you know, we're doing this, we're, we're making plans. And you come in and you start asking W2 questions, you know, how much can I make in 30 days? Uh, how many days do I have to do this for? Uh, you know, uh, do, do I have to do it every day? Uh, you know, those are, those, those, those are W2 questions. You know, how, you know, how much money do I make an hour? You know, uh, how many hours do I have to work a week? What is my schedule? You know, those are, those are W2 questions. A 1099 question, you work until the work is done. Yes. You work as many days as you have to, right? You, I mean, it's, it's, there's no, you put the cap on what you want. How much money can you make? As much as you want, right? Yeah. So the thing is, if you start putting a cap on things, you're basically setting yourself up for failure because, the thing is, is that you're, it's either never going to be enough or you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be satisfied with where you are. If you, you know, if you say, okay, I want to make $2,000 and you make $1,500, you are like, okay, you know, you might yeah. feel down about that. So yeah. the thing is, is that I, I said that because you can't, you can't go into business or anything like that with that type of mindset. Listen, you can be in a W-2 situation. I mean, I started my business and started everything, you know, working in full-time job. So it's not like you can't do both. It's just that you got to understand there's a mindset you got to have here and there's a mindset you got to have here, but those two can't, they can't intermingle. And that's one of the reasons why they're two different forms when you file your taxes. So. Yeah. It, <laughs> you're so well said. Uh, I think it is, um, I don't know, criminal or just shocking that, you know, school, whether it's high school or college, whatever school means to you, teaches us to work, be what I call the 40-40 life right? It's get set to work 40 hours for 40 years to live on 40%. That's oh what my God, I love that. Yeah. Feel free to, feel free to take that. Oh my tag gosh, tag me. That. But again, right. What I does could. school teach you? you? Go get a job, 40 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to retire in your sixties, 40 years. And Oh, by the way, what they don't tell you is you're going to retire best case on 40%, right? Cause what are you going to do? You know, 401ks or pensions or whatever it is. It's that, not that, gonna keep up with inflation. No, it's and and for lots of us, it just won't be there, right? I mean, they're mm -hmm. gonna they're gonna slash and burn eventually. Right. That, right. That, that's just math. Um, so you've got to do something else, right? The the side hustle, uh, you know, you got to think ten ninety nine. I love that, right? Don't bring a W two mindset to a ten ninety nine party. So, um, when did when did real estate come into kind of your purview? Was it pre kid after kid? When did that sort of all happen? My my sister. Uh, ah, my sister okay. called me, uh, my younger sister. Let me, let me tell you something about my younger sister, man. So All right. she uh, is younger, but she's more fearless. I had to see her as a kid do something before I did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this publicly. But Dude, that's, a, that's recorded now, man. She's if, gonna... <laughs> if I don't say it, 
my grandmother will say it or my mom will say it. So I was raised by my, my mother and grandmother. Oh, and uh, <laughs> my grandmother is like my best friend, right? Because when, I, when, when we would go places, right? I didn't like elevators. I was scared of elevators. And my oh. son is too. It's crazy. <laughs> my grandma would take the stairs with me. My mom and my sister would get on the elevator. And then they, my mom would just mock me the whole time. My grandma would mock me the whole time up the stairs. Your sister's younger than you, and they're already at the top. And, and I'm like, ooh. You know, and then we used to ride go-karts. We used to, my mom used to take us to this go-kart place. And um, my sister would get on the go-kart, and my, my grandma would always say, see, your sister's younger than you. And, and then I would get on the go-kart. Uh, right but it would almost be time to go every time so uh, I say all that to say my sister calls me one day and um so here, here's the story I finally saved up enough cash to buy my at the time my dream car right okay. which was a 2013 Dodge Charger ah okay I wanted a Charger so bad I wanted a uh, an SRT leather seats the big the big screen oh, the yeah. sunroof uh the alloy wheels and the uh the bar, the balancing bar in the back. That's yeah. what I wanted. Silk. And I finally found it. Went and paid for it. Ah. It was a 72 hour return thing for, for any reason, right? So my sister calls me and she's like, you need to come home. This is my hometown she's talking about. I'm like, why? What's going on? Because my grandmother's there. She's there. What's going on? She's like, there's a guy that just passed away and his family didn't take care of any of his rental properties. They just collected rent, but they didn't pay any of the taxes. Oh, shoot. So the city confiscated the, the houses and they're having a big sale, you know, a big like estate sale for, for these houses. Mm -hmm. You need to come. And so I was like, okay, you know, she's like, no, you need to come. And I was like, all right. So I, I went there the next day. We went and we were looking at some of them. They were all like duplexes. They were like these, these duplexes and they were split. And when we got the list, they were like 30,000, 15,000, you know, 40,000. But the thing is, you couldn't go in them, right? Yeah. You just, it was pretty much, you know, the, the windows didn't have blinds, so you could see in them, but that was it. Mm. So I ended up making a purchase of one that was, you know, out of town and um, went and got it, paid 30 grand for it. I actually, what I had to do was I had to go back and take my car back. Yeah. And, um, they kept, you know, salesmen, well, what's wrong with it? What, you know, what can we do? I was like, no, you know, and I just kept denying them. It cost me $500 because one of the parts of the 72 hour return is that you have to pay a $500 relock fee, right? Sure. For putting them back in there. So I lost $500 in that. Okay. No big deal. So I bought this property and, um, you know, it needed cabinets, it needed new flooring, needed, you know, the walls need to touch stuff. We put about 15 grand into it. Um, and that property rents for a little over 800 a month. Wow. And, um, that was the first one. And I got addicted after that. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Because when we bought the house and we walked in, it was just like the doors had holes in them. They were these, you know, those <laughs> cheap old wooded doors oh, yeah. that you could thump them and there would be a <laughs> hole in them. They were hollow. Yeah. <laughs> so they had all these doors that had, you know, uh, you know, holes in them. Uh, the cabinets were, you know, were all messed up, but to go, like we, we were going and buying like all this stuff and it was crazy how it wasn't like expensive as I thought it would be. Like we, we bought doors for the whole house for like 600 bucks. Right. And, um, you know, then we bought cabinets, we did some stuff and just to watch it all come together yeah. and be like, I can live here, you know, yeah. and then get someone that looks at it and says, this is nice. We, we want it. What do we have to do? It, it was just, it just something clicked. Oh, I, want so people, was, yeah, I want people to hear this, right? You, you had just gotten your dream car that you had probably thought about for years, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you had it. You were, mm -hmm. Your ass was in the seat. Oh, and, yeah. Heated yeah. seats. Heated seats, baby. Come on. <laughs> and then your sister calls you uh, and says, you got to come check this out. You go check it out. You're like, I need to get me some of this. You take the car back, which I'm sure wasn't a great day right? It, it just, wasn't. it wasn't a great day. Just we're it guys, right? It wasn't a great day. Right. Uh, but then it sounds like you get the house, you do the work. It sounds like you own it free and clear, at least at this point, because you probably First had to pay one. cash. Mm -hmm. Then you had to yeah. put the 15 in. So you're yeah. into it for 45. It's written for 800. Awesome deal. Um, I'm guessing just a wild ass guess that you refi it at some point. Uh, put some debt on it so you can do it again. Or do you still own it free and clear today? I still own that one free and clear. Uh, ah, okay. 
uh, I took fifteen thousand dollars out of my four hundred one k at the time because I was working at the time. Oh sure, and I I've had done a side that. hustle. My side hustle was eBay, so I I bought it cash, but then to 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 you know fix it up, I took fifteen thousand out of my four hundred one k. Um, and that was borrowed. And so I, you borrowed fifteen k, yeah, right? Yeah, so we yeah, borrowed fifteen thousand against it, right? Right. And so what happened was, I saw like once I got into it, I got I, I went to an accountant, talked to him, and he told me he's like, look, you know, your taxes aren't going to be that much more. You know, the house is really cheap. You're going to do good. You know, we can add this on here, but here's what you need to do. Uh, you're not taking advantage of your, you know, pre-tax deductions. You need to increase your 401k. Mm. And because right now you're paying too much in taxes. Mm. You know, if you increase your pre-tax deductions, your taxable income will, will go down. Mm. So I bumped my 401k at the time. This was years ago from like 3% to like 7 Okay. But I only saw like a $50 difference in like my personal take-home pay. Right. It was crazy. Yeah. So what I did was I... I had this 401k and then when I had left my job in 2014 and went to this other place, uh, I bought another property with, with the 401k that I had saved up. So that right? one, that one you cashed out. Right. You pay, took the right. penalty. Which, which I probably wouldn't recommend to people. It wasn't a good idea because of how much of a penalty I paid. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, it was huge. That was not something I would recommend, but I'm just trying to be transparent. Oh yeah. Let's, let's be clear. I did the same thing, bought a couple of properties and it's not something I recommend, but I did it. I'm like, yeah, Ooh, I, I can too. take that pile and go buy that thing. I'm in. Right. Right. And, and, and like I said, I bought that and, and that property set for six months because I had to save money. To ah, yeah, yeah. So basically I was making about $3,000 a month from eBay. And so, but the thing about it was that I had to still go buy more products for eBay. So mm -hmm. my take home or net was around 1500, right? Maybe 1500 to 2000. And I would take that. And that's where I was slowly investing into this other place. Got it. And got it built up, got it rented. And it's just been, and then whenever I started, you know, going live teaching, you know, going live on an app yeah. called Periscope, I wasn't planning on being like a coach or teaching. I would just go in there and I'd be going to like one of my rental properties. Hey, yeah. Please. Uh, what do you think about this door? I'd be at Lowe's or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, I would be shipping stuff off on eBay and people start asking me, do you teach this? Do you teach us? Can you teach us about eBay? Can you teach us about stock investing? Like, you yeah. do all this stuff. Can you teach it? Nice. And I was like, no, I, don't I don't do that. You know? Yeah, like, no, no. no. I do. <laughs> and, um, so after you get so many people asking to pay you money to teach yeah. them something you know, yeah. you start to pay attention. Yeah. And so I, I hired this coach, his name was Kelly James, to teach me how to be a coach and teach people. Ah. And um, so I started teaching people, or, you know, I worked with him for six weeks. We set up all my systems, set up everything, and I had my first class. Nice. And it was an eBay class teaching people how to get on eBay. It was a three-day class from Thursday night to Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, three days. And... Um, I listed it for, at first it was $97. And one of the people who I was uh, in a group with on a Facebook group was like, you need to take that class down right now. I'm like, Why? They said, just take it down. So I took it down. I was like, what's going on? They said, you need to put $300 on that class. I was like, who's going to pay me $300 to teach me about eBay? They're like, a lot of people. Uh -huh. Take it down, put $300 on it. So I put $300 on it. I had all these people sign up and get this. I got scared. Ah! So I'm like, wait a minute. All these people are signing up. What if I can't deliver? Imposter syndrome kicked in. Yeah, yeah. So I, I stopped the registration page, and I can't remember how many people I had, but I made over $7,000 for that three days. Nice. And I ended up teaching like four more classes in a row because there were so many people waiting to get in. Yeah. Because I had come on every day consistently just showing what I was doing. I wasn't trying to sell anything. Yeah, I was yeah. showing what I do in a day in the life. Yeah. And then I said, okay, if I do this, this could funnel my rental properties and also so many other things. And yeah. It just took off. Oh, you're, you're, you're just uh, another version of Grant Cardone, right? Cause Grant Cardone starts off teaching car salesmen how to do their yeah. thing. And then he funnels it into his, you know, that's how he starts his journey. So we're, we're looking at the next uh, Grant Cardone here, folks. So that's, hey, uh, man, that's not, that's not bad company at all. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's, it's meant as a compliment. The guy's on his way oh, to being yeah. a billionaire. He, yeah, he's got a he's got his own plane, you know. <laughs> that doesn't so, suck. <laughs> no, and he and he buys 
apartment properties that I would move my family to. Yeah. And we built our home. So, uh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> well, so, so tell me about the real estate portfolio. So first off, the first thing I would tell you as a real estate guy is given where interest rates are today, you might want to at least think about getting a 50% LTV on that duplex at that first one you bought. Cause mm -hmm. that's some cheap money, right? Especially as a 1099, uh, you get the interest right off all those things. You're borrowing money at, you know, one and a half percent. Right. So, well, that, that's something that I'm actually looking at doing is ah, actually taking look at out that. a line of credit. It's funny you said that I'm looking at taking out a line of credit against, um, uh, you know, a, a property or two, yeah. So that I can pay cash for the other property, own it outright, but then just have another one that's finance. Exactly. And um, because right now, interest rates are, what was it, in 2012, interest rates were like three and a quarter for 30 years, right? Yeah, yeah. And now they're approaching that again right now. And if I remember right, when we built our house around that time, we live in a, in a really, really nice area. Uh, it was less than $100 a square foot to build a house oh, wow. in this area. And this is, this is one of the upscale areas in Oklahoma that we live in. Okay. And, um, you know, we, we built our home and next thing you know, now in this same neighborhood, it's about 150 a square foot. Oh, right. Cause they're still nice. building houses. Yeah. So the thing that I'm learning is, and, and my mentor now, who wasn't my mentor, you know, years ago happens to be now he, he, he is a commercial and residential builder. He owns his own company building houses, building businesses, everything. Nice. So now if I wanted to really get into, you know, really get to the next level and I've got someone that can do it for me at, at costs and really take me to this next level of the building side. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking at a lot of things right now because like you said, money is cheap right now. It's yeah, money, really cheap. And when you've got things to cover that expense, it makes it even more palatable, Absolutely. right? Because I can hold on to my cash and grow that. Yep and use someone else's money, right? Mm -hmm. To grow more. And if anything push comes to shove, I've got something over here to take care of that. But as long as this is taking care of this, I can grow it over here. And I've got two piles of cash that's constantly growing every time I go back and visit. Absolutely. So, yeah. so what is, uh, what is George Pitt's real estate portfolio look like today in early 2020? So right now I just have four properties. Um, I just have four. Um, four properties or four units? For, well, so I have one unit, which is a duplex multi-unit okay. and three, you know, or two rent houses and then my house. Okay. So got it. Four, four properties total. Four properties, and, five doors. Correct. Got gotcha. it. Okay. And so what I'm looking at doing next is I really want to get into the multi-unit. Okay. Um, I think where I'm going to buy next, I've already, I'm already looking at some places. I don't think I'm going to buy here. It's, it's, I'm already looking at the state. Um, okay. Right now, um, Missouri and Arkansas are really good areas right now for, for, you know, mid tier properties. I like my, my range right now is around that 50 to 75,000 range. I love that range because there's a lot, you find the right deal. There's a lot of flexibility there and there's a, there's a lot of increase that can come in with it. Mm. And it's a lot more palatable for me. Now, at some point, I'll probably go up another notch. But right now, that's kind of the area that I'm in. That's been the sweet spot for me for a while. And so that's what I'm looking at doing next. Um, so I have no idea about those two markets. You're saying 50 to 75K total or is that 50 to 75K a door? Um, it's 50 to 75K to make it, to, to purchase it, right? Got it. To purchase okay. the property. Got and it. then you still got to go in. And some okay. of them are already, but they're if you want to update them and it'll look a lot better than what they look now, it's usually people wanting to get out of them because either they're, you know, they're moving their grandparents or aunts or parents into you gotcha. know, homes and they don't want to deal with the properties. Gotcha. And so that's what I'm seeing a lot of in those, in those two States. right now. Gotcha. Very cool. And I don't know, geography is not my strength, but I'm guessing that's a flight for you. If you want to go check it out, you're not really doing an eight or 10 hour uh, drive, I mean, right? It's about a five hour drive for me or it's an hour flight. So okay. if I can get a good, flash flash uh Sailing. when we bought uh we're looking at properties right now and in, in, in Arkansas for my son because I'm buying him his first property next wow um, we drove yeah 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 uh I, I made a post on uh, on Instagram about it uh and I even showed two of the houses that we looked at and uh, one we put an offer in on we we didn't end up getting it because they actually had a lien against the property oh yeah not clean, and huh? uh you know that gets really hairy so we we backed off but uh, 
Yeah, so 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 we we drove there. We just made it a little weekend deal. Nice. And, uh, we've got some friends up there in that area, so you know we just made it a little trip. We we looked over a couple of places, drove through it. So uh, you know if if it's something that you know my my wife and you know we feel that our son can handle the trip, we'll 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 just get on the road and drive. Or if not, nice. you know, I'll just jump on a flight, be there in an hour, stay there a day. Yeah. You know, already have my list together of where I'm going to go. You know, do check in at the hotel, jump in the rental car, yeah. drop my bags off, and just start. You know, I want to I want to talk about this goal more because I think more parents should think about this, right? The ability to secure a, a, a single family home rental property for your child, right? Your child's you know newborn, right? Pre kindergarten, um, mm-hmm. is is such an amazing thing because you're you're going to basically set them up when they're out of high school. You no, know, you're going to be 12, 13, 14, 15 years into the pay down. Right. Inflation will come to rents. Inflation will come to um, you know, the value and you're going to have options, right? I talk to people all the time that have a, a child. I'm like, well, forget the 529, right? Go buy them, a, oh. go buy them a rental house. And, yeah. and, and when they're 18, you have options, right? You can, you know, transfer it to them if you want. That could be their, that could be their college fund. That could be their, you know, entrepreneur fund. Cause who knows, right? I think college by the time they're 18 will be very different. And maybe the 529 won't work because the, the, the thing that is higher education won't be university. So why lock up the money with so many rules and restriction, get them a house, put a reasonable down payment in it. So it's conservative and then hold on to the thing for 15 years. And you know, you'd be amazed what you have. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that what you just spelled out is so simple to do because if you think about it, um, I'm a numbers guy, right? Most people know that. If you go and you get, let's just say, a hundred thousand dollar property at three and a quarter interest rate, right? Yeah. You put your fifteen percent down. Mm-hmm. You're looking at less than a car payment yeah. in a mortgage, right? Yeah. So the thing is, is that like for me, all three of my cars are paid for. I the oldest one I've had for ten years. The 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 least oldest one that we've had is is we've had it for six years. Yeah, and they're, they're all under a hundred thousand miles because we just switched between the three and not having that car payment has allowed us to be flexible to take chances like this. Right. So the thing is, is that I think what a person has to get into them is that they just got to say, okay, you, you, how, how much, how many hours do you really spend in a car? What, maybe two hours a day total. Yeah. Right. Unless you're just a war, road warrior. So, you know, you eliminate that expense and you put it into something that could appreciate. Yep. Because a car depreciates every single month, right? Absolutely. Really, as soon as you get it. Yeah. A house, depending on a market, can increase monthly. It can increase annually. But the thing about it is that, for me, here's my plan, right? This is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lay it out there. I'm going to find a property. We're going to find it. We're going to buy it, right? When we get that property, we're going to set it up just like we do our other ones, where a percentage of the, the rent money goes towards you know, uh, an account that, that continues to grow so that if anything comes up with the property that we need to take care of, we can take care of it, right? Every yeah. every house we have has an account for that, right? Yeah. So it's not, not a surprise. And then, you know, then we put, you know, some money into, you know, if, if we're going to put a mortgage against it, it'll go towards that mortgage. And then whatever profit margins we have, that funnels back into dividend stocks for him. So now he's got two income streams that can grow for the next 18 years is going to continue to compound, right? He's got a rental property that's coming in. He's got money that's being funneled into uh, dividend. I love dividend stocks, dividend stocks and ETFs. Yeah. And those things are continuing to compound every year. He's not even three yet. By the time he's 18, he's going to have, you know, there's no telling, you know, I mean, I would like, my goal is to buy him one property a year. Wow. On top of us too. So, uh, you know, I, we don't spend a lot of money on ourselves. Like we do so well financially, but we don't spend a lot of money on unnecessary things. We just don't. Yeah. Uh, we make memories. We go on vacation, but we don't go buy fancy cars. We don't go buy expensive stuff. Right. We, we just want to see our child win because me and my wife had over $150,000 in student loan debt together. Woo. And neither one of us, let me, here's the kicker. We had that amount of student loan debt without degrees. We didn't Ouch. finish school at the time. So when we went back and we completed all that, we played, we paid for our degrees out of pocket, you know, when we decided to go back and finish. 
Mm. But I want people to know that, like, this is why I'm so motivated. I want him to not have to worry about that in his That's 20s awesome. or 30s, right? He needs to be able to have that. So if, if I'm able to get him, even if it's just five properties, he'll have five income properties, right? By the time he's, he's, he's 18 or, or 21, whatever, whatever time we decide to turn that over. <laughs> I'm guessing 21 based on the way Probably you- Probably <laughs> 21, yeah. <laughs> based um, on the way you reacted there, it's 21. Yeah, yeah, 18, I remember what I was like at 18. Dude. Oh yeah, I don't know yet. So, but he'll have options, you know, if yeah. we're averaging $800 to, well, you know, you think about it, the cost of living is going to go up. Oh, for sure. Season. So if we're averaging, you know, over a thousand dollars a door, he's got $5,000 a month coming to him, you know, that, I mean, that's $60,000 a year. Yeah. So he's got options now, right? He can go and do the things that he wants to do. He can go and decide what it is he does really want to do. Yeah. Most people, they go to school, they get this debt, and they, they get into something. But when you're 18, do you really know what you want to do at 21, 22? Not really. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You, you, you think you do, and then people get their degrees, and then they end up getting into the field, and they realize, I don't even like, I don't even like this, yeah. right? So, he get, you know, I'm, I, what my job is as a father and as a husband is to make sure my family has options, yeah. right? Because I did and that's the motivation behind what I do. And real estate to me is the catalyst to all that because everybody needs a place to stay. Yeah. Everybody. Totally. So that's kind of where, where, where my mindset is when it comes to that. Yeah. So George, the question I wanted to close with, with you is, is really tying this all together. What do you think the key was when your mindset shifted from living just enough or paycheck to paycheck to this really abundance mindset you have today. What, what was you, it for you? I'll tell you the exact thing. So me and my wife, we, uh, we went to try to buy a property, try to buy our first house. We didn't know anything about buying a house, right? Our credit was horrible. I didn't understand credit. So we paid this lady that, you know, she charged $500 so she'll get everything ruled off the credit in six months. We paid her the $500, like about 40 people did, never saw her again. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then we pay, you know, some companies out there. There's like Lexington, Continental. We paid all these companies over a period of like three years, nothing. So the turning point was for me was that I remember calling this lady at this, uh, at this, you know, mortgage company and we tried to apply for a mortgage and she's like, Oh yeah, you make good money. Oh yeah. You guys will be fine. And she called back and said, I'm sorry. We, we can't do it. So then we, we, we were working with this credit repair company. They got a few things removed. They said, I think you're ready to, to go. We still didn't know how to check our scores or nothing. So I called her back like two months later and told her, you know, hey, I think we're ready. She ran it again, nothing. So two or three months later, they said, hey, we got some more stuff removed. You know, I think you're good to go. We called her back. And I remember she said this, and this hurt me. I mean, this, this, this made me angry, but it hurt me. She oh. said, Mr. Pitts, I would not have a bad day if you didn't call me. <sighs> you are wasting my time calling me, having me pull your credit, and you're not qualified. Ooh. I have other people that are ready to, you know, buy, that's going to put money on my table. You're not doing that. Goodbye. And she hung up. Okay. I remember the bank. I remember the lady's name. I remember it to this day. This was 10 years ago. That was the turning point for me. I said, not only will this be the last time someone ever denies me for something, nice. but it'll be the last time I let anybody else control or tell me, you know, when I can do something, when I can do it. So I took a week off from work and I took, and, and I, my wife was still going to work and I said, I'm taking a week off. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to learn everything I can about credit. I went into our spare bedroom because we were renting this house at the time and I stayed in there from 7 a.m. in the morning to 1 or 2 at night every day for five days learning about credit. Mm. I fixed our credit, was able to get our scores up over 200 points in three months. Wow. I called a different bank, a local bank, and spoke to this really nice lady. She got everything approved. And I didn't tell my wife for three days because her birthday was three days late. Oh. And if anybody knows me, I can't hold water. <laughs> so I was having panic attacks because <laughs> I had this letter and I was going to put it, I put it in a birthday card and I was going to give it to her for a surprise party. Yeah. So her, the day finally came and I, and I gave it to her and told her we qualified, we can go and find a property. Nice. And we 
drove by this neighborhood on our way to dinner one night, and my wife's like, I want to go over there and look. And this lot that was right here had a big green trash can in it and two houses under construction on each side. And she said, I like that. I was like, it's just a lot with a trash can in it. She's like, yeah. I can see our house. So we wow. called the builder, gave him our paperwork, started the process. Three months later, we, we built our home and moved into it. Oh, and that is awesome. That was the point where I learned I could do anything I put my mind to. If I just, I know it sounds cliche. I know some people might roll their eyes because I used to hear what I used to say. You do anything you put your mind to and people would say that I'd roll my eyes. When I figured out if you just focus on what it is you want to do and you take whatever steps you need to take to get to it, you can achieve anything. Uh -huh. And that's the approach I've taken in my life on everything since then. This house is what changed my life because what it did was it showed me that if I put my mind towards something, I can achieve it. And everything that I've decided that I've wanted to do since then, I've been able to achieve. I've just hunkered down, run through the steps, I'll close my door, and I'll just get to work. And I mean, you see here, my whiteboard's full of stuff. I'll start writing. I'll start checking stuff off. I've got, you see the little check marks right I do, yeah, right up there. Uh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, of just all the steps I got to take until I get to where where the goal is manifested. Yes. And I'm, that's what I've done with my life. And that's what I teach my clients. How to do. <laughs> well, George, this has been amazing. How can people follow you? What Instagram website? How can people follow you? Because your story, you as a person uh, is awesome. Uh, this has been so awesome, much fun. Man. Thank you so much, man, for having me. And uh, listen, if you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Mr. George Pitts. Uh, that's P-I-T-T-S. It's just like Brad Pitt, but with an S at the end. <laughs> um, my website's the same, MrGeorgePitts.com. Um, and uh, those are the places that I frequent the most. Uh, I also use Periscope, <clears throat> which is uh, Twitter's uh, live streaming app, which is Mr. George Pitts. And soon uh, I'll be uh, doing my uh, own YouTube channel, which is also Mr. George Pitts. So you can find me pretty much everywhere at Mr. George Pitts, whether it's .com, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, and um, you know, soon to be YouTube. Very, very cool, George. Well, do me a favor. Keep being a positive light out there. Keep helping people. Keep, uh, keep being you, man. You're, you're, you're authentic and just so much fun to speak with. Keep it up. Man, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you for having me on, man. I'm a, I'm a fan now. I've, I've been watching your YouTube channel, and uh, I can't get, I can't wait to get more doors. And uh, you know, I just want you to know now, man, that uh, whether you like it or not, you're a friend now. So uh, awesome. anything I can ever do for you, man, reach out. All right, George. Thank you very much, buddy. Take care. Absolutely.